Okay, in this video, we are going to look to see how to find the eigenspaces of a matrix. So uh, we've talked about eigenvalues already. So remember that when you have an eigenvalue, um, you have AX equals lambda times X. Basically, multiplying uh, the, the matrix by these vectors is the same as multiplying uh, the vector by just a scalar. Now, that doesn't work for just any vector. There are, are specific vectors, um, x, that would work here. So the eigenspace um, of a uh, matrix corresponding to an eigenvalue are the set of all vectors uh, that would solve this. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find all the x's that would work here for this. The only way I'm going to be able to do that is for me to come up with lambda first. So I do need to find all the um, eigenvalues for this. Now we've seen before that I'm just going to um, subtract lambda from the main diagonal uh, entries and set that determinant equal to zero. So if I multiply these two, I get uh, lambda squared plus lambda, and then subtracting six right there. And that does factor as lambda plus three lambda minus two. And so I can see that lambda could be negative three uh, or it could equal two. So those are the two eigenvalues for this particular matrix. Now notice that, uh, or I guess I should say, um, it seems reasonable that if I were to put negative three here, I may get different vectors for X than if I had put two there. So there is an eigenspace, uh, and this is in general, there's an eigenspace for each eigenvalue. So you do have to find the eigenvalues first, then you have to plug those in. Now, if I tried to solve for the eigenspace by uh, just putting, let's say, negative three right there and trying to solve this, um, that can be pretty complicated. It's actually not too bad with a two by two, but it gets worse with a three by three um, and the larger the size, uh, as with most things in matrices, the more difficult the problem becomes. So what I would suggest is actually this, and let me show you why this works. So this is equivalent to saying AX minus lambda X equals zero. And then if I wanted to factor an X out of that, I can't just put A minus lambda because that doesn't make any sense. That's a matrix minus a scalar. That's not defined. But what I could do is I could write lambda as lambda times I because if I multiplied lambda times I times X, I times X is just X anyway. Um, so I get this right here, this homogeneous equation, A minus lambda I times x equals zero. Now, um, the x's that work are called eigenvectors. And again, the eigenspace, which is what we're after, um, is the set of all eigenvectors. So, um, and, and they do, uh, or in general, it's assumed that an eigenvector is not the zero vector. So we are looking for non-zero solutions to this. Um, now, what I can do is, instead of as I said, just putting the number in right here and trying to solve, what I can do is I can set this up as an augmented matrix and solve it from there. So let's start by finding the eigenspace for lambda equals negative three. And I'm actually gonna put in what this matrix would become. So I'm literally going to plug negative three in here and see what I get. Notice that would become a two. That's a three, that's a two like normal, and then this would become a three as well. And then remember, it's a homogeneous problem, so these are gonna be zeros anyway. Now, what you'll notice is, um, and I don't have to go through the strict ruling here, but I see that I have the same row. So if I just did row two minus row one, this would become two, three, zero on top and just zero, zero, zero along the bottom. So notice that the, um, if you wanna call uh, if you want to say X here is X1, X2, notice that um, this is where we'll have a leading one. In fact, I'll go ahead and do half of row one uh, to get it there. Great. 
And um, then we can see that x2 is free. So if I go ahead and just say x2 is some parameter, we'll call it t, um, then this equation becomes x1 plus 3 halves x2 equals 0. Well, if x2 is t, and then I move that over, I get that x1 is negative 3 halves t. So my solution x, which again is x1, x2, could be written as negative 3 halves t, t. And if I factor t out of that, I'm left with the vector minus 3 halves 1. And so remember that we were looking for eigenspace, essentially the set of all x's that work. Well, notice the answer is it's any scalar multiple of this vector. So we were looking for a basis uh, for the eigenspace. Um, the basis, notice we could think of this as just the span of this vector. And when I only have one vector, um, that one vector, uh, first off, it is the span, so no problem. But also it has to be, um, and it's almost vacuously um, linearly independent, right? If there's only one of them, uh, then it it can't really be a constant multiple of other vectors because there aren't any other vectors. Um, so the uh, basis for this particular one, um, so the, we'll say basis for uh, lambda equals negative 3 is simply just the vector minus 3 halves 1. Now, could you have said that the basis was the vector um, minus 3 comma 2, for example? Yes, you could have, because that's really just double this, um, and then any scalar multiple of that would be any scalar multiple of this. So there could be multiple answers, uh, but in this particular case, all of them should be uh, some constant multiple of that. Um, let's then do the uh, basis for lambda equals uh, 2, the other value. So if I put 2 in right here, this matrix becomes negative 3, 3, 2, negative 2. And again, it's a homogeneous solution. So uh, first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and do minus one third of row one and one half of row two. That's going to make this one negative one zero and one negative one zero. And then just like before, row two minus row one makes this one negative one zero on the top and zeros along the bottom. So again, x2 is free, so we'll just say x2 is t, and then this top equation becomes x1 minus x2 is zero, uh, or in other words, x1 equals x2, and since x2 was t, x1 has to also be t. So our solution x, which again is x1, x2, um, is just t, comma t. If I factor the t out, uh, I'm left with a vector 1, 1. So in this particular problem, slide this up just a little bit, um, the basis for lambda equals 2 is just the vector 1, 1. Again, that doesn't have to be your answer explicitly, um, but it would, in this case, have to be some constant multiple of 1, 1. Um, so that's how we can find the, the basis. And again, with a two by two um, uh, matrix, it's pretty easy to find. In the next video, we'll see how to do uh, the bases for a three by three matrix. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know.